Hey everyone, and welcome back to Modern Horror's 31 Days of Halloween on Build Environment. Coming to you in audio form this time because all my batteries are dead. If you're interested in the rules of our 31 Movies in 31 Days Marathon, check back to week one for the summary. Now, before we move on to this week's streaming service of choice, we do need to finish up with the final movie from Netflix week, which was Evidence. This is a found footage movie with somewhat interesting delivery that actually harkens back, I think, to 1980s Cannibal Holocaust, arguably the first found footage movie ever. Most of the time in these movies, the found footage just plays or is presented with minimal framing like title cards or a voiceover, but in evidence the framing story of the movie follows the Police Video Forensics Investigations Department as they recover and view the footage from multiple cameras at a crime scene, which creates a very interesting in-the-moment effect like the den or unfriended, but with less of a feeling of being trapped in front of a computer. It's, uh, it's actually pretty novel and pretty fun, I thought. Unfortunately, it also leads to the exact sequence of events being a bit jumbled because we'll often see something happen and then see it again a few minutes later from another camera found at the crime scene. I also wasn't entirely thrilled with the final resolution. But now on to Hulu with the Maniac remake. Now, I should admit that I haven't actually seen the original Maniac, but this remake uses a very interesting, mostly first-person filming style to present the story of unhinged mannequin repairman Frank's unsuccessful attempts to find love and stop killing people. The POV makes a lot of what Frank does very uncomfortable, but thankfully moves towards third-person later on as he becomes more and more detached from reality. It's worth watching if you like unsettling. Next up is The Deaths of Ian Stone, which if we're being honest, plays more like a dark fantasy adventure story, but has a nicely designed horror monster. The story is about a guy who becomes aware of these monsters that eat fear, sadness, and death, and they trap him in an endless cycle of becoming another person in another life until he invariably finds out about them again and then gets killed. It's uh, actually got some decent tension and the effects are pretty great. I'm not sure I'd call it horror, but it's still very fun to watch. Third in Hulu Week is The Thaw, the touching tale of a daughter reconciling with her environmentalist scientist father while fending off ravenous prehistoric insect-like creatures thawed from the Arctic ice because of global warming. Really, the story and the characters are secondary here, which is okay because they're not any good. But what is good here is the uncomfortable and disgusting gore effects, especially for the tryptophobic among the audience. After that, we watch The Haunting of Cell Block 11, which is yet another ghost hunting show gone wrong as they find real ghosts. It has some nice spots, but it's no grave encounters. The effects are pretty awful for the most part, though they are used creatively enough. And unlike so many other movies that use the ghost hunting show angle as a way of explaining their found footage, this one is shot traditionally and looks fairly decent aside from the uh, somewhat lackluster ghosts. I liked it, but I am a fan of the shtick. Now before we get to your final movie, I did want to explain why we only have five entries in Hulu Week, and that's because we took Saturday Night Off to play Until Dawn all the way through in one sitting, which was pretty fun. So our final movie of the official Hulu Week is cult classic full moon feature subspecies. Now, subspecies is about two Romanian vampire brothers fighting over their father's legacy, a magic stone that bleeds the blood of saints, and the prettier brother's love interest who is a student from America doing research on local folklore. Now, the stop motion in this movie is pretty good, and uh, after a rough start, it has aged quite well in most cases. The movie itself is a reminder of a simpler and much more gothically romantic time of vampires that uh, presents its full moon, early 90s style cheese in a very melodramatic way. And compared to so many of their other series, especially as Full Moon made sequel after sequel throughout the 90s, this attempts to take itself pretty seriously and is remarkably solid for a low-budget vampire movie. Though it's not without some slow parts that kind of lost my interest. Anyway, thank you so much for watching the 31 Days of Halloween Week 2 Summary. Please leave a comment below if you'd like, and please like and subscribe for more videos. Anyway, cheers everyone, and happy Halloween! Okay.